Este hermoso museo está ubicado en la hermosa playa de Britania, a solo 10 minutos del sur de Squamish. Este museo y sitio histórico nacional galardonado de 10 acres está lleno de diversión para todas las edades, incluidas actividades de rocas y minerales, búsqueda de oro, recorrido por museos y si no lo creen ustedes aquí hay un tren de, que va sobre un tren subterráneo que puede cabalgar sobre ti mismo. Desde maquinarias históricas hasta edificios patrimoniales, el museo alberga de todo, desde máquinas y carros de mineral hasta un tanque de cal en funcionamiento, junto con otros recordatorios de la ciudad minera que alguna vez fue dentro de la tienda de máquinas de 1908 del museo encontrarás Aún más tesoros, desde un automóvil de ambulancia restaurado y artefactos industriales más grandes, hasta el automóvil del hombre, un vehículo del tamaño de un sedán que una vez tuvo 16 mineros. Una nueva atracción ha llegado al Museo de la Mina Británica. Descubra la cautivadora historia de Neil, con una experiencia de narración imaginativa con ninguna, como ninguna otra en Norteamérica, organizada dentro del edificio Neil de casi 100 años, boom, devolverá la vida a la maravilla arquitectónica con luces, sonido y efectos especiales. Este increíble edificio es la razón detrás de la designación del Museo de la Mina Británica como sitio histórico nacional dentro de este impresionante hito industrial es donde una vez se procesó el mineral. The next vital part in the process is our mill building. That is where we extract all the precious minerals from the rock. There were three mills here over this mine's 70 year lifetime. Mill number one was on the ocean front. It was torn down very early on in operations. It just wasn't big enough to cope. Mill number two, you see the remains of behind us here on the mountainside. That mill burned to the ground in a fire in 1921. So at that time, the mine was faced with a big problem. Huge amounts of copper up there and no way to process the rock. So everything came to a standstill here and that is when incredibly, in only 18 months, by hand, they built this monster here, mill number three. Back then it cost them a million dollars and in 1921, that was a huge investment. Mm, yeah. This is the building that actually gives this museum its historic site label. It is the largest and only remaining gravity-fed mill left in Canada. And I promise you guys, when I take you inside, you are not going to believe your eyes. Where you see the train lines coming in at the very top of the building, that is where all our rocks are coming in, out of the main haulage tunnel of the mine. Now here at the museum, very sadly, we are a non-for-profit organization. We do not receive any government funding. So how we generate money around here when we can, we hire out the tunnel and this to the movie makers. This was most recently the Monster Factory in Scooby-Doo 2. And just a few months, a here, uh, few months ago here, our good friend Harry Potter filming his new movie, Haunt. It causes all kinds of trouble, but we don't mind because they're paying us lots of money. Come on in. <laughs> You are looking at an engineering masterpiece for the time. Very sadly for you, from where you are stood, 
you can only see up to level number five of this building. There are three more enormous levels above us that you cannot possibly see from down here. Today, this building would be the same in height as a 20-storey skyscraper. Ooh. Now, back in 1920, 40 people here operated the mill. It was a terrible place to work. This is where we crush and grind the rock. That disease, silicosis, was a big problem in here. This building was thunderously noisy and dusty beyond belief. But if you do work here, my friends, this staircase is how you get to work. 375 steps, 45 degree angle, and at no time did they ever have handrails. The handrails were only installed when we became a museum in 1975. What? I climb it often, and trust me, going up is tough, but coming down is lethal. And when you turn around at the top, your equilibrium is naturally thrown, and it is a sheer drop to the bottom. And needless to say, I'm hanging on to those handrails for dear life. Good. This thing I stood on is called the skip, and it was used for hauling machinery to the top of the building. If we ever got caught riding it, fired immediately. And the reason being, it runs on one single winch cable, and it doesn't have any brakes. There were times where the cable snapped, and the whole thing would have come tearing out of here, straight through the town site. <laughs> so I'd like you lovely people to have a seat over here by the demonstration, and I'm going to show you how this incredible building works to remove the copper from the rock. So this is the magic rock that we were mining here at Britannia. It's called Calco Pyrite. All the sparkly greeny gold that you see in the rock, that's what contains the copper. The problem is, this is encased in a whole load of other junk that we don't want. So this enormous building is a gigantic crushing machine. The rocks come in at the very top where we saw the train lines outside. The first level of crushing up here in this building, massive jaw crushers breaking up that rock. It comes down a few more levels and it goes through comb grinders and they work very much like pepper mills that we use for grinding pepper onto our food. Finally, we're dumping the rock into enormous steel drums. Similar to these models, they're called ball mills and there are 17 of them up here above us. To them, we add hundreds of these solid steel balls. They all go around like a tumble dryer and these things obliterate the rock. After those three grinding processes only, we've gone from baseball sized chunks to sand. We call this the fines. This contains our copper. Now all we have to do is extract it. Look behind us. So just behind us in this building where I'm pointing, there are two big cells. One here, one above, and they run the entire length of the building. In there is where we put this crushed up rock. To that, we add water, air, bubbles, and chemicals. So essentially in those two areas above us, it was just like a great big bubble bath going on. And you can see it in this little photograph right here. This process, everyone, is called froth flotation. It's effective, it's efficient, and it's most definitely still used today. Because of the chemicals we put in, the copper wants to get out. It rises and it sticks to the surface area of the bubbles. And I'm going to show you it in action right here. So it's a big mineral bubble bath. It's all that black, shiny, sparkly stuff that you see covering the bubbles on the spoon here. Mm -hmm. Hey, Don't touch it there, but no. Yep. So all we have to do now is rake and dewater this, my friends. And that was done on the three big round stages behind you in tanks, just like this red one outside here called thickeners. So we rake it, we dewater it. And this, my friends, is what all the hard work was for. This is our copper concentrate, and it was the final product here in Britannia. This is 95% calcopyrite. It was a very high recovery rate. Does this look like a copper pipe to you? No. So then this is all loaded onto steam ships. And it was taken to smelters, Crofton, Vancouver Island, Tacoma, Washington, and finally Japan. It's when that is heated at 1100 degrees C that it becomes 100% copper and turns into what we used to see piping, wiring, and pennies look like. Now this building crushes 7,000 tons a day. For the small amount of the good stuff, this building produced masses of waste rock or tailings. One man's job to remove the gold and silver and it was somebody the company trusted. How they did it here, they ran all their waste through woolen blankets, 
The gold and silver got trapped in the fibres and this one employee was responsible for retrieving it. Over the 70 years of operation, we recovered 500,000 ounces of gold. That's about the size of two very big fat elephants and six million ounces of silver. But compared to the 800,000 tons of copper, that was tiny. And then what did we do with all this waste rock? Well, we'd never get away with it today, my friends, because of course, we're far more environmentally aware. But back then, 48 million tons was dumped into the ocean outside. So the highway that we drive on today and the railway that runs to Whistler, it's all built on land that was created from the waste of this magnificent building, mill number three. <laughs> and that, my friends, is basically the whole story from beginning to end. It was very nice to have you on tour this morning. I hope you enjoyed it and that it's given you some appreciation for what my miss did here and what they're doing all over the world today so that we can enjoy our iPhones, our iPads, our computers, our TVs, our cars, our airplanes. The list is endless. Please enjoy the rest of the museum. There's still lots to do and see. And don't forget to go gold panning. Anything you find, you can keep. So hopefully by the time you leave, you'll all be millionaires. I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Please feel free to wander on the stage, take any photographs you like. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Experimente cómo habría sido la vida de un minero en los 1914, subiendo a bordo del tren minero del museo que lo llevará al interior de un túnel de transporte temprano, donde encontrarás taladros de trabajo reales y unas máquinas de limpiezas. Es bueno saberlo, las temperaturas bajo la tierra promedian alrededor de 12 grados Celsius. Se recomienda un suéter o una, o una chaqueta ligera. El museo de la mina británica está completamente equipado para la diversión familiar con un foso de arena gigante, un bote de juegos y un área de refrigerios con comidas Aprenda cómo era realmente la vida de un pueblo minero en este edificio patrimonial bellamente restaurado donde encontrarás historias, fotos archivadas y el trono original utilizado en el concurso Copper Queen. Bueno, yo me acuerdo que al pasar por aquí hace muchos años atrás, esas ventanas de este edificio estaban rotas y eh, la gente las usaba eh, para punto blanco al disparar armas de aires o tal vez eh, piedras o solo por, por tal vez por diversión, pero ahora esto lo quitaron más bonito y les quedó mucho mejor se mira muy agradable y ya las ventanas estas ventanas así como ustedes pueden ver son contra piedras o bueno están más este no son de vidrio creo yo pues bueno yo me despido de ustedes esperando que les haya gustado este video y si ustedes no los han hecho no se olviden de suscribirse a este su canal y nos despedimos.